Hey there, Joe Evans here of Liquid Vision here in Columbus, Ohio. Today we're going to do another tutorial. We are now going to do the Elder. Um, a lot of people have asked me for that, and once again, it is Scott Marshall's Elder. Um, Scott, for this one, did for me. He did all like the Super Sculpey, I think like Aves Epoxy, um, horns in there. Um, normally I don't come like that. I think he just gives you like regular horns, but he installed all of them on this one. Um, but once again, it's just latex with foam head backing. This will be a wearable mask. One to one scale. Um, it's just simply awesome. I mean, you know, wait till we're done with it. So just sit back, relax, and hope I can help you guys again. Thank you. Hey there guys, so first thing we want to do is actually use some kind of adhesion promoter agent for flexibility and um, for, for the paint. Um, acrylic paint is usually like PVC based. It has some flexing agent to it, but with the more layers, it stands like to crack and everything. So what we do is use an adhesion, um, um, adhesion promoter agent. Normally what I do is mix in what I've been doing lately, some few is laying the base first of uh, the adhesion promoter and um, there's many of them out there um, one I found that I stuck with not only because he's a friend of mine but uh, Tim Gore he has this really cool stuff um, it's from by Createx and Createx does wicked all kinds of fantastic colors and stuff like that but if um, Tim Gorsh he's got his bloodline out so they do this you have to like really search for it but um it's um just a flexible adhesion promoter and everything and that's why you want your paint to be flexed because of your your latex so what we do is just proceed it doesn't have to be a heavy coat it'll just be a light coat this will dry really like in a few minutes and you can even shoot your paint right on here it'll dry with the paint and stuff Like I said, it'll just, it's clear, but you can, um, you know, build up a little bit. It's, it's, like I said, it's just a flexible agent. It doesn't matter if it's thin or thick, it'll still have flexibility. So I just do it till I see like a, a little white, and what you'll be left over with is just a little light tack. Um, even when it dries, it will be tacky, not, but not sticky. Guys, and that's it. That's first stage. Nothing, nothing easier than that. Like I said, it's just a light, uh, sticky tack to it. It dries in a few minutes, and then we'll go on to our first layers of paint. Uh, okay, guys, welcome back. We are now just going to put a uh, base coat on. Um, so what I use, you can use um, Liquitex. Um, Unbleached titanium, you know, and add a, the uh, adhesive promoter to it. Um, other stuff would be like, you know, latex paint, packs, and all that kind of stuff. But for now, what I do is I'm just going to use golden Titan Buff, same color as unbleached titanium, and just add my adhesion from uh, Tim Gore's adhesion promoter from Bloodline. And once again, this will be just open it up. Base 
base coat. Hey guys, so now we're going to start our color um, palettes. Once again, I'm going to use uh, Golden. Um, I've seen actually on the net there's a different ways to do a, an Elder and everything. Some like sandy browns and everything. Some, some are like kind of like a little bit of the Predator where you've got um, some raw sand is a little bit of yellows and then mostly like a uh, I think like a Payne's gray for the shading and stuff like that. So I'm just going to go kind of like it's going to look you know okay anyway. It's called Naples Yellow Hue. It's just your like base coat. It's still golden. But what I do is I'll mix some prosate in with it for the stick. Mix it up real well. And this is just going to be a light coat. That's it, folks. And it's just our light base. Really, you just like I said, it's a base coat. It really mm -hmm. won't even show much. And uh, there you go. Okay, guys, we're back with um, our next color, raw sienna. Same thing from Golden. This is um, if you will get the ones with the high flow acrylics, these are the airbrush ones ready to go. Um, the normal Golden acrylics are run. You can use an airbrush. Um, but I would really prefer to put them down, uh, thin them down with water, or there are um, airbrush transparent extenders and stuff like that, just to make it just like the high flow acrylics, and still have uh, an adhesion to them. Folks, just phase two. Just going to say you're just going to do a light dusting of the raw sienna, not to totally subdue the ochre. I mean the um, um, Naples yellow, just a little bit on top. There you go, folks. Thank you. Okay, guys, welcome back. Next color is going to be a brown, and once again, it's going to be mist. It's not going to be a real prominent color. Um, once again, there are variations because the raw umber for high flow acrylics is different than raw umber from Golden. Um, the high flows actually had to seem a, seem to have a very very high contrast instead of a like a matte finish. So the raw umber, it's going to use it like I said. It's it's ready, you know, just to um, shoot straight out of the airbrush. But of course, being called high flow, that's why. See, it just just goes on. Excuse me, really easy, and you can get wonderful transparencies. And once again, we're going to mist all this. Um, don't worry because the Elder, it has the basic colors, you know, of your printed or whatever, you know, gone older. So what we're going to do in the end, and I'll show you, is we're going to mist it with this gray. And it'll still subdue some of the brightness to make it look aged. So right now what we're doing is planting the seed for just the regular color patterns and stuff. You're going to come out, you don't want to come all the way because you just don't want to go from brown that, you still want your brown, your sienna, and your um, yellow naples into the cream. So you kind of just want to mist it over that, so you're a little bit darker, but you don't want, you still want some of the color to show through. folks and there you are there is phase two of an elder or phase phase three or four thanks
Okay guys, um, now for some little bit of detail and stuff, a lot of the main colors are done. I'm just going to use um, Golden's, um, I call it airbrush colors, it's just high flow acrylics, this is just an older bottle I have, um, but we're going to use burnt sienna. And, uh, It's just this like little spot details. The elder does have some burnt sienna in there. And you're not totally coloring it, but you're putting some like little circles. Oops. Little circles. And also in between, if you haven't seen me do it, each layer I do, I add, um, I forgot to on this one, I do add the adhesion promoter. So this is where we'll go in with the famous predator spots that are your, um, your uh, raw umber spots, but we're going to, we're going to use burnt sienna instead of uh, raw umber spots or burn number, whichever one you'd like. And bring out your pattern. My favorite part of always is people always said they liked my painting because it looked organic. I'm like, well, it's because I like this part, like setting it up. There we go, folks. Next phase. Okay, guys, we're back. Um, one of the last things we're gonna do, like I said, to give that elder that older look is um, is you're gonna like take I, I it's like wrought iron from full cart. Really, you're just gonna take like a deep charcoal gray. And you're going to start doing the spots. And now this you want to do with the predator feel, like, you know, the dots and stuff like that and all the, the pattern. If you're familiar with it, fine. If you're not, what I do is not just dots. I try to think of like a giraffe. Um, I mean, I think I got pretty good pattern. If you want to see... Somebody has started their patterns more. I mean, it's fine with me, but um, the actual, you know, Scott Marshall himself, um, he's got excellent, you know, patterns and stuff. But like I said, it's just, I'm going to go in and I have to have real tiny control over these little dots and stuff. Try to keep your air pressure about 20 to 30 they'll do fine and like I said you um, you just kind of make them like little blocks and stuff bigger ones you can be more lenient kind of like like I said just just like giraffe patterns And of course, oh, believe it or not, you can do it if you'd like. There's, there's two ways to go about this. You can actually do this with black, and then you would mist the gray over top of it, subduing, you know, all the black. Or you can just do the gray like that, and it'll still look nice. Because if you do it with this, with the gray, we'll end up using the black, maybe for a few black spots. And um, also some shading like deep in the spines. And of course you have to have black for um, 
their um, eye sockets and stuff. So you're just going to bring that pattern on down. Variously, you know, pull the I think I have mine just to thin down just a little too much. Not really. So you got the pattern coming down. Then Ever find yourself your air, air um, airbrush getting clogged? Not only do that, just do this pull back and push it. It should just clear right up. Since it's acrylic, the paint gets dried pretty quick, and uh, whatever the excess doesn't get sprayed out, and it'll get clogged up in there. So just feel free to scoot it out. Of course. You do your shading all up in your eye socket. Still doing, I know it's hard to see. Still doing a lot of, you know, the dots. Shade his eye. Probably a little bit over the sienna, just to just to bring it forward a little make it more deeper set. And just stay down just a little bit over that. Um, kind of that was about what I was getting ready to show you. This is the fun part. Take a little of the gray and you just mist it over top. Not too much. You don't want them totally muted. But you're just going to lightly mist that ochre just a little bit just that's how he gets that elder like that light gray if you want just a little bit more you can take a um a lighter gray it's probably what i should have done yeah you take this lighter gray oops that is not gray Take a gray right here. Probably you're going, to, you're going to do this actually over the whole thing when it's done, but I'm just trying to show you for right now. Just take a, a medium gray, whatever, and you lightly, lightly mist over top of that because you still want all that to come through. See, you're turning them like that light gray, like that elder. Like I said, you're going to do this over top of the whole thing when it's done. 
even all, you know, your, your red, or like the flesh in here. But it's fun to do it now, especially over the darker areas. It doesn't really show up that great on like the light areas. Also too, you kind of want to use this gray or in the crack. So I guess that was like a step we was going to do. You just real finely, I mean super fine, get these little these little grooves and stuff like that. Remember his, he's an elder, so him being older, the gray is a little bit more profound. Now, like I said, this is technique and control with your airbrush. See, I'm even doing like little circles and stuff. It's really, this is where it starts. It's just not color laying. This is technique of how to airbrush. And even though this is all going to be colored, it's okay to put your base coat down. Because even with the, um, the red they have along the face, you don't want it like super bright red and stuff. So that'll actually, actually um, act as a base for that. You come up here. You can add little swirls. I like even putting gray right where the, um, the mandibles are. Like, you know, he's, he's older, he's had cavities. But all these little creases and stuff like this go in and just have a ball. But like I said, be responsible. Um, now, like I said, once again, this is where we're going to put the flesh and stuff like that. So it's okay for me to do this as a base coat. I want to put that red right over top of it, but it's just like priming a car. If you put like a little light color under there, you still have a little of that shadow come through. Put like a darker under there, and you'll just you'll see the the different subtle changes and stuff. So all these now this is when you go in, you get to be an airbrush expert, going with the best of your ability and shadow. All these little, these little nooks and stuff like that. Like I said, he's he's an elder. He's got distress. He's got worn years and stuff. This is pretty quick, but this is just this is because I I know what I'm doing. I've done this before. You'll if you're beginning and want to leave an elder, you'll be like, well, here's okay. Is that is that enough? Is that enough? Yeah, you'll know when enough's enough. Um, like I said, once again, who cares if you're making it look like mine, you're making it look like a model, you're making it look like what? You get to make it look like however you want it. I'm just showing you some templates and stuff. And I get a little bit of swirl patterns in there. I even kind of like gray in the lips. You know, wherever he's got shadows, you want to make him really appear ancient. This may take a few minutes. I'm not saying for me, but I'm just saying with you. On your taste and everything, how much, how little you want to do. And like I said, since I do these so much and so often, it just will appear quick for me. Okay, and there we have that phase. Just the light grays and everything. Now he's starting to really look old. Thanks. Hi guys. So coming back, and uh, I'm not going to do all of it. I'm going to do some of it. I'm going to put the um, 
in the red, the flesh highlights in it. And I use, um, you can use any kind of rose. Right now I've got one, it's a, it's a liquid, Liquitex. Um, yeah, Venetian rose or something like that. So it's just, it's, you'll see, it's just like a warm pink. And all you're doing is just barely misting. going to do is deepen it with another color and you don't want that to show you don't want this to be too prominent and then you're going to mist along the gum line here Since this isn't the main color you'll be using, you're just lightly doing it. I said to blend in. See, that's what you're doing. Okay, guys. Uh, actually, well, you can still keep it going. Just add it. So after we're done with that rose, guys, I use a, um, a deeper flesh. It's um, called Wicked, Wicked Brown from Wicked. Another one that's great by Createx too. It's ready to airbrush. Stuff's fantastic. So we're just going to add a little depth to it. It's almost like a, a really rose brown. So you're just going to go in here, pretty fine, and this is where it will be heavy body. I want to be really precise with that. But you'll see that line that I'm putting in really deep and direct. But once again, since it's airbrush, you still want to build up your values. Deepening that in. And that'll make sense the rose because the rose will already be the light that we use. Like I said, this is a fantastic flesh color. It looks almost like a burnt sienna, but it's really fleshy and warm. Now I can pull this up into here. You know, like I said, there's no limit like where it wants to go. Somebody's like, oh, well, it doesn't go up there and stuff like that. It's, it's your creation. Lightly misting, and add a little bit more. And they don't, they don't have to look like perfect straight lines. As a matter of fact, even where this connects, do a little bit deeper right here, and do a little deeper up there. The way it just looks like a like an aged something. We're not trying to put stripes on it. We're trying to put depth into all these curves and stuff.
right here in the middle. That is a little bit deeper to it. Not that much. Go in the nodules on the side. Again, you don't, don't really airbrush the nodules around them. Airbrush around them in a little circular. Look really organic. And of course, the more you build up, you get that really deep and reddish value. Kind of a little bit back there. Doing like I said, little circular patterns. Really light pressure. I said you don't want this to look like simple you know, squiggle marks and stuff like that. Guys, we're back. We're going to do the mouth. Um, there's two ways. Um, you can either do wicked. I do like a, either a flesh, and I go in with like a red, like a raspberry red or something like that for all the shading. Um, I was looking closer, and I see some people do use a pink. So Tim Gore, of course, of um, Tim Gore's Bloodlines Createx. It's a nice pink. It's like a deadly pink, deathly pink. It's not like carnation pink or anything. It's kind of like a little mid muted brown in it and stuff like that. And uh, so what we're going to do, once again, is just lightly do the whole mouth area pink. And it's just going to be your base coat. You don't want it heavily built up to look like a, a pink rose. Matter of fact, guys and girls, That's it. That's all the pink you're going to use. So what we're going to do real quick, we'll go back. And um, once again, this is like just preference or something like that. I've got a really cool thing here. It's an odd color. It, it's just, it's a great, but it's um, from a company called Life Color. And it's for, uh, you get them like hobby shops. So it's from a company called Life Color. They're for model miniatures, like soldiers, tanks, and everything. But I get Italian Mimet brown, too. And um, it's like that reddish brown. But it makes excellent for veins and stuff, like in zombies. Um, aged. So we're going to use this on his mouth. And you'll see why. And I'm just going to do little tiny swirls in here. Of course, you know, common sense, just shading in your grooves and stuff. And drop here around. And it's very thin airbrush ready to go. No pre-mixing, no nothing, no thinning down. That's why this is one of my favorites. And it sticks, it adheres really good. And inside, you see all the little blotching and stuff like that. This is what I'm talking. Give you all that wonderful color of an elder.
you know, going back over some of the the red to darken it in. A little raspberry pink. And that's it, guys. That is the inside of the mount. Okay, guys. Um, last of the teeth. Now, of course, since he's the elder, he's going to have yellow, more yellowish teeth. And he's even got like a broken one and different mandibles as his as the predators grow, they they develop different teeth out and stuff like that. So, from we use a brown, I would say it's use anything like a yellowish sand. Um, a basic one I've got here is just um, oh my goodness, I think maple tan, something like that. But it's it's a really nice um, soft creamy brown. Almost looks like color of like breakfast cereal. I'm just going to mist it all. Not even going to. I base coated it. Um, tan, but the, the, and you're not going to use an adhesive agent for this. Why? It's resin. They're not flexible, so you can just spray these just like you would a resin model. So you're just going to go through all these. Okay, guys, we're back. We've um, done the teeth. We've added. What we're going to do is just put the values in the teeth now. So we're going to use golden acrylics again. Using a raw sienna, I'm just going to have some value, some shading. looks like. You're just going to do that to the rest of them. Okay guys, I'm going to add the final um, a deep wash brown and once again it's the golden high flow acrylic, the sepia. I know sepia is kind of like a reddish brown, almost like it's not really quite a burnt umber, it's not quite a burnt sienna in between, but it makes a really nice brown wash. So we're just going to shade And what you're going to do is just, you know, just shade them, shade them and stuff. Now what you can do after you're done, you can dry brush them for um, you know, some, some highlight values. I'm just saying you can, you don't have to. One done almost looks like old wood. Hey guys, we've done all the teeth and everything. Now we're going to do is just the installation. Um, what I use is any from any hobby shop. You can actually use any I've seen, like CA glue. But what I do, also this cuts down time, it's called an accelerator. What it does is it dries out all the moisture within the glue. And see, it's, it's on there. teeth installed. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to go back in with um, a little bit of that warm brown that we had. 
Just a little bit. Some of the, um, the last thing to do or step would be, uh, this is what everybody waits for, is the black. But now, you don't have to, since all the black dots are subdued up here and stuff, what you can do is go back in. Add some more black dots. Like I said, this is where it starts to come alive. Of course, it's with those black coming out. And like I said, you know, take your time. Um, the reason why I can just do this that quick is because I painted lots and lots of predators. I know where the pattern is supposed to go. So with our detail, Black. This is what it's like just with the black added. Quills. I think I'd got from somebody. I'm sure, like most of all you predator guys, they make black ones, but I'm sure they can make white ones for you. This is just um, Super Sculpey Bend and Bake. You can buy it at Michaels and stuff like that. It's just, you know, like for kids and stuff. But it's, um, you just roll them up, bake them, and they are little rubber flexible things. They're fantastic. Okay guys, here we are finished. I installed the white quills. I just threw some gray at the base of them. Um, put some white in the dots in there. Just, you know, maybe a little white on the teeth and everything. But otherwise, this is your ancient elder predator.